Uh, basketball news, uh, there is another transfer um, portal m member from South Carolina, Ibrahim Adiba, who had transferred into Carolina a couple of years ago from Coastal, uh, had an Achilles tear, just never, you know, it, you know look, that, those take nearly a year, just like, a, you know, a pretty big knee injury to, to come back from. And even when he got on the court, the production just wasn't there. It's not a knock. It happens. Uh, Achilles injuries are often so very difficult to come back from. We've seen that many times in sports. Uh, but he has entered the portal. So uh, if nothing else, it opens up another slot for Lamont and the staff. Uh, as you and I were talking earlier off air, Elijah, to go and find someone who who can be more productive. And, again, that's not a knock on. Because I think I think we thought Abrino was going to come in here and and have some meaningful minutes, um, you know, when fully healthy and coming out of uh, a good conference at Coastal and, a, and, you know, good teacher and coach and Cliff Ellis at the time. Um, just didn't, I mean, again, major injury is 90-plus uh, percent mm. of of what didn't happen for him at Carolina. Yeah, the Achilles has a is notorious for, for ending, you know, at least the, the prime of careers. I mean, Kobe Bryant was never the same after he tore his Achilles. Sean Marion, to me, might be the most notable of difference in athleticism for somebody who relied so much of it. Tore his Achilles was absolutely never the same afterwards. But if you you know you look at his departure and you see the spot that it opens up, you have a ta some talented freshmen coming in, uh, most notably Trent Noah. Um, you'd like to be able to have a spot for him to be able to see if, if he if he's good enough to play right away, or especially defend at the SEC level. We all know he can shoot. But if he's able to defend at an SEC level, it'd be good to have that spot there for him to be able to play right away and get some very valuable experience as a freshman. And South Carolina is also reportedly in on about three players in the transfer portal that I think very highly of that would be incredible gets for them and would automatically make you better from day one. And if it just if that gives you that type of flexibility, then it's good for all parties. Abrema can go to a place where he's going to be a little more involved in the offense and be a little more involved um, in the team in general and that can open up a spot for you to get one of these uh, one of these transfer portal players that you're reportedly in on I suppose the answer is all of the above before I even offer multiple choice answers to a question but what might be in your estimation the single most important hole to fill for South Carolina maybe not from a personnel standpoint but from a positional standpoint Ooh, from a positional standpoint, I think probably your most important, uh, probably a rim protector. I think you're going to need a really good rim protector. When you're in the SEC and you play against teams that have like Florida's size, Auburn's size, teams that do facilitate really good offense and are able to get to the rim at a high percentage, um, you'd like to be able to have another Josh Gray type player who can take away shots at the rim, right? You'd like to be able to be able to compete against those teams in that that area especially teams with, that have the athleticism of like your auburns or your arkansas teams that r r would give you trouble in that that area so i would say you know a really good rim protector and then you can never have enough shooting that's why when i saw that they were in on malik dia from belmont i got instantly excited for them and that would be a huge pickup because he is one of the best shooting bigs in college basketball and he can stretch the floor and belmont was awesome offensively they were like a top you know, 23-point shooting team um, for most of the season. And a lot of that is because they could bring their center out beyond the three-point line and him shoot 37 to 40% throughout the season. I, I think, you know, versatility in your bigs along with rim protection is something that I think you'd really have to get. Yes, you'd like to see somebody come in at like a shooting guard, combo guard position to fill Michi's shoes, which they're also um, looking to do in the transfer portal because they're in on somebody like Jordan Sears, who's a Tennessee Martin player who averaged 21 points a game for Tennessee Martin while also shooting over 40-plus percent from the three-point line. So there's certainly avenues where you can get that type of production in on day one. But I would, if I had to pick one, which I'm going to do, I'm going to say get, get you either a rim protecting big or um, a stretch stretch yeah. five. And we talked about five uh, Federico Federico of Pitt, who's right. uh, Federico who's, times two. That's right. Whose brother will be coming into South Carolina uh, as a freshman. Their finish, uh, Federico Federico, is older and has been at Pitt a couple of years. But as you mentioned, one of the better shot blockers in rim all protectors. of college basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, again, no word on if. Uh, he is one of the targets for this staff 
but we'll be paying a lot more attention to this. I know excitement is high. He would fill that hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's done it in a in a great league. Mm-hmm. So there's that against teams that also have really yeah, good yeah, size yeah. and athleticism in the ACC. Yeah. Obviously, a team or a conference that's filled up what twenty five percent of the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah.